Okay, thank you, Norud. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. So it's me, Sada. So uh, today's our presentation topic is translation process and translation quality. A study of Indonesian student translator. Please change the slide, Norud. Yeah. Am I audible? Okay, thank you. So chapter one, introduction. background of the uh, study according to okay let me go here okay sorry uh, background of the study according to Munde, since the regarded as a, uh, since regarded as the field of study translator translation study a name first proposed by James S. Holmes in 1972 has grown and developed as an academic uh, study in its own right and a paramount factor is making translation study an autonomous academic discipline is a descriptive uh, descriptive translation study and uh, translation study on dts focuses on three areas of uh, research uh, primarily uh, product process and function oriented and then the uh, these phenomena imply that a good quality of translation can only be achieved when translate uh, translated by the translator themselves so next point in the last 10 years translation study research shifted more to the translation process research and many see the translation activity as a cognitive process where uh, creativity uh, should be involved and this was point uh, given by kusmal in 2000 in this uh, stage of translation, uh, in this stage of research development, the study is not merely observing the mental process in the translator mind, but also the model of uh, typically reading, management of resources, translation behavior, and learning styles. One of the indicators of types of translation process is how translator work with the phases of uh, translation process that includes pre-drafting, drafting, and post-drafting, and these are also known as the prescribed phases of translation uh, phases. And this was point given by Mosop 2001. Anul, can you please uh, show the slide more clear? Okay, uh, so in slide second, uh, in addition, uh, whether translators depend on, on their own knowledge or rely on other support from uh, outsiders can also reveal their presence on the particular type of translation process while observing the student do their translation task in the classroom. The researcher found some of the um, some of them taking buses for uh, not doing anything, neither did they write nor did they have open dictionaries or other references book. In, in other words, they only rely on uh, their previous knowledge to solve the problem of their translation work. Uh, here is the uh, uh, writer, uh, the translator, Melky, 2009. He defines self-correction as an instance in which the writer or translator makes an addition, a deletion, or a change to the target uh, text. The core idea of the self-correction is making a change to the text done by the translator themselves while doing translation. So another uh, writer called NK 2011 used the term self-revision to refer to the one of the stages of translation process in which uh, some or all of the translated text is reread, retyped, and, uh, and corrected. He in 2015 proposed the term post-editor to refer to the future role of the humans in the translation process. Translators can be uh, either student, novice, uh, semi-professional, or experienced professional translators. And this study identifies the translation process undertaken by the student translator and how it contributes to the quality of the translated text. This study observes how the task is planned, uh, performed, and edited and evaluated. So, in next slide, 
identification of the problem issues of translation problems uh, can be found in two areas uh, namely translation process study and the translation product study and these are two uh, main areas given by Demeter, uh, Demetro uh, 2005 and uh, the translation problem can be set up under various types uh, such as the lexical syntactical uh, syntactic pragmatic uh, text linguist uh, cultural uh, specific creativity demanding and the uh, comprehensibility related problems. So method in identification uh, problems in product based uh, translation focuses on the quality issues meanwhile in translation process by discovering pauses, hesitation problem solving cues using think aloud protocols, questionnaires, logging and eye tracking. However, after King's, uh, King's uh, seminar work in 2001, a shift of the interest towards the cognitive process involves in translation it started to be the subject of uh, research. The shift requires a collaborative work of uh, interdisciplinary to find the problem, procedure, and the translation process from the cognitive, psychology, language, learning, teaching, and so on. This study focuses on finding how the um, process undertaken during the translation contributes to the quality of translation and uh, there are many aspects of translation process that contribute to the quality of translation product done by student translators. In, in most uh, works, researchers and translators find many low uh, quality work in improving such condition. We have to understand what process uh, they may go through uh, and a good process result in good quality of the work. So next slide, please. Uh, so research question, uh, based on the identification of the problem, there are four uh, research question, uh, questions as the following. The very first one is the, uh, which process is more you know, dominantly used by the student translator while translating the text. Second one is what type of self-correction is mostly done by the student translator while translating the text. Third one is what online resources are used by the student translator while translating the text. And the fourth one and last one is then how does the translation process contribute to the uh, quality of for translation product. So in next slide. Purpose of the study. Uh, so the purpose of the study can be uh, intended that uh, to determine the uh, process more dominantly used by the student transla uh, translators in the translating the text. Second one is that to find out the type of self-correction mostly done by the student translator while translating the text. And the third one is that to find out the online resource used by the student translators while translating the text. And the last one is that to find out how the translation process contribute to the quality of translation product. So please, next slide. So significance of the study. Uh, one of the major aim is to uh, demonstrate that by investigating the translation process of a student translator, uh, another aim of equal value is to de detect pattern of performance that would reveal optimal work approaches leading to a translation product of a high quality. This study is conducted with an academic pedagogical setting in mind. So the scope of the study is that uh, the process of translation was defined under three phases suggested by Jacobson 2003 and the MISOP 2001 uh, that include the first phase uh, that is oriented phase, the second phase are shift, uh, drafting phase and the third one is revision phase. The translation uh, process was assessed in terms of how the work was planned, performed, and revised. It is necessarily to clarify that this research was not about who, who should become a translator and who should not. So this study was about discovering the student preference and tendencies, addressing their needs, assisting them in the process of self-awareness, uh, and scattering for the smooth uh, trans uh, transition of all, the, uh, all of them into the professional world. So in next slide, structure of the study. So uh, here you can see the structure of the study that uh, the very first chapter defined the introduction. It defines the background of what to be, and to be done. This chapter clearly explains what, how, and why uh, such a study needs to be uh, performed. And second chapter, the literature review, it focuses on the prior research in translation study. The third chapter is a research method. It is started from the framework of methodology. And fourth chapter, data analysis, it focuses on the data uh, presentation, uh, offering a descriptive 
and analysis of the data the fifth chapter finding in the discussion the findings are presented in discussion for the formulation of uh, new theories um, uh, concerning type of translation process and the sixth chapter is in, is the conclusion and the recommendation it offers a compact view of finding in relation uh, in relation to the uh, formulated research question so please next slide okay uh, so uh, definition of the technical terms that used in, uh, in in this research paper in order to avoid misunderstanding about the research technical uh, terms used in this research most uh, those terms have been following meanings the very first one is that Camstasia, uh, that is a is a screen recording software used to record the screen activities done by the student translator. Second one is that the pre-drafting phase. It is the activity in translation process in which the translator takes time to read the source text and try to comprehend and understand. The third one is drafting phase is the activity in the translation process that uh, uh, starts with the typing of the first character of the keystroke and ends when the translator set up the final punctuation mark or equivalent keystroke. And the fourth one is that post drafting phase is the activity in the translator or process in which the translator gave a correction or revision on the first draft fourth one is that uh, fifth one is that a student translator is a master degree a master degree program student majoring translation study and the sixth one there's uh, a novice translation that is the semi uh, semi professional professional translator is a person who uh, who has acquired a methodological basis and a certain amount of translation competence in, in him and the seventh one is that a professional translator is a translator that has completed an MA degree in translation and interpreting uh, study and the eighth one is that uh, online resource the kind of help or support that can be used in the process of translation in the form of web pages or uh, end or documents on the internet providing useful information. Tenth one is that, uh, oh, sorry, ninth one is that uh, self correction is a process of giving correction or revision done by the uh, translator while translating a certain text. And last one is that translog is a key log, a software program which records or uh, logs all the key stroke a translator made on a computer uh, board by, when you know, translating text. Yeah, next slide. So here start our chapter two, uh, that is a theoretical concept in the literature review, translation study. Translation is seen as a process uh, rewriting a text involving at least two language playing different roles as a source language and a target language. So uh, cognitively, uh, translation is a complex activity because it involves the understanding text in the source language, sometimes of a highly specialized nature, and producing on the basis of source text a text in the uh, target language that can be accepted as a text by the target language readers. And in, in, in addition, uh, Monday 2005 state, uh, states that translation is changing in original uh, written text, the source text into the original verbal text, that is the source language, into a written text, the target text in a different verbal languages, the, tar uh, the target languages. So uh, the translation study emerged as a new uh, academic discipline, uh, discipline in the beginning of the 20th century, and that was given by when in 2004. After that, the discipline of the translation study has been growing steadily uh, since the 1950s and 1960s with an accelerated uh, growth as an academic discipline with research and as a professional area. So it's... Uh, as earlier uh, as 1972, when Holmes presented his paper, The Name and the Nature of Translation Study, uh, at the translation section of the Third International Congress of the Applied Linguistics in Copenhagen, he, he, drive, he drew a map for the new discipline of translation studies when, uh, when he called for the beginning of the meta discussion in translation studies. So please, next slide. Uh, so uh, the map uh, um, given by Tori, 1995, he, he, he served as a st uh, starting point for the researchers with its binary division of the translation study into two main branches, the pure and the applied uh, uh, translation. Uh, so uh, this is the uh, map of the um, uh, map that was suggested by Tori. Here, translation study is divided into two main branches. The very first one is the pure, and the other one is applied. Uh, then those two. Uh, uh, main branches are further divided into many other uh, sub branches as you can see in this uh, map okay can you please change the slide thank you 
uh, applied translation study. So applied translation study is the performative branch of translation study, which is concerned with the translation activities that addresses a particular goal and a specific uh, group of final users, and that imply doing something with or for the uh, for our uh, about uh, no, translation according to some standard of quality. And uh, when um, with regard to uh, applied translation study, Holmes 2004 makes a distinction between four categories, uh, namely translator training, second, translation aids, third, translation policy, fourth, fourth one, translation criticism. So uh, I will define these terms one by one. The very first one is the translation uh, translator training, and that is primarily concerned with the teaching methods, the testing techniques, and curriculum planning. Second one is translation aids deals with the dictionaries, grammars, and other helps needed by the translators, such as the IT application covering translator software, online database, and use of internet. Uh, and the uh, third one is that translation policy contributes to the infor uh, informed advices to others in uh, defining the place and role of the translator translating and the uh, translation uh, translations in society at large. And the fourth one and last one is that translation criticism that reveals the evolution of the translator reviews and, uh, and revision. So here is uh, uh, another of our um, uh, transition studies, that is the pure transition study. Uh, pure transition studies are done for the theoretical purpose and have two main uh, objectives, uh, such as the descriptive and the theoretical, uh, that is further divided into two uh, other main uh, types. The very first one is theoretical uh, transition study. It deals with the uh, general uh, principles to be established, which the phenomena can be explained and predicted. That is called the translation theory. Uh, in, and the second one is that descriptive translation study study, DTS, uh, that describe the phenomena of translating and the translation called the descriptive translation study. So please, next slide. So pauses in uh, process oriented uh, translation. Uh, this slide totally deals with the different views given by the translator. So the very first one is uh, um, given by the Alps and the Jack, uh, Jacobson. In translation process, uh, pauses are seen uh, as indicators of cognitive proce um, processing and the center of discussion of the translation uh, process research. And in second point, we have the Krings 2001 point. The, in addition, the high operational of the pauses in uh, an advantage for the data analysis, he uses pauses uh, as markers for uh, identifying the writing X in posting editing activity. The third point was uh, given by, uh, sorry, I, I couldn't see it clearly, but I will uh, just read it. Uh, I don't know what it is written. Uh, so uh, the person he defines uh, pauses as the interpretation in the typing of the translation and the hesitation as the unusually slow uh, typing uh, is that investigate the translation process by uh, con uh, concentrating uh, exclusively on the analysis of uh, pausing and pauses and the hesitation uh, phenomena. The fourth one is that Jacobson in 1998 he investigates the pauses in the context of translation process analysis using the uh, using the translog uh, tool and the um, uh, so sixth one, uh, fifth one is that the hands in 2002 investigate you know, the two hypotheses regarding the uh, correct uh, occurrences of the pauses in the translation uh, process. Uh, her uh, his uh, her first uh, hypothesis is that some translator demonstrated the specific pauses behaviors in translation, which is independent of uh, uh, language directions. Her uh, second hypothesis is that there is no uh, correlation between the position, uh, position and duration and the number of pauses and the quality of translation product. Yes, second uh, slide, please. So, uh, models of uh, uh, translation. Um, uh, models of translation were uh, um, uh, were given by Newbert and Shru. They propose seven models of translation. The very first one is that uh, critical model. Uh, second one is the practical model. Uh, the linguistic model. The text uh, text linguistic model. The sociocultural model. The computational model. The psycho uh, psycholinguistic model. Please next slide. 
uh, so here is the description of uh, those two models that the very first uh, model that the critical model normally presupposes are a finishing finished uh, translation the translation exists in time and the space the critics objective is the evolution commentary this perspective on the translation is result oriented and static uh, and the critical uh, critical model was retrospective model so the second point defined that the practical model the practical model of the translation uh, takes the source text as a point of departure the goal is uh, an uh, is an understanding of the target text through a study of the process of the translation translation behavior translation strategy that leads to an acceptable translation and this uh, practical model is prospective model the third point defined that the linguistic model of the translation uh, that makes the statement about the linguistic mechanism involves in the transfer uh, are replacement of uh, source languages signed by the target language uh, language signs and uh, this uh, this approach uh, this approach treats the uh, translation is a specific uh, perhaps unique type of language text uh, and the fourth one is that the uh, text uh, linguistic model of translation that maintains that an original text and the translation are different not only because their sentences are different but also because there are contents operation at a level beyond the sentence furthermore in the text or uh, linguistic model equivalence of the meaning is not beyond to, uh, beyond uh, bound to the sentence uh, but is distributed uh, through throughout the text the fifth one de uh, define the social cultural model and uh, the social cultural model does recognize the verbal substratum of the translation but defines translation primarily as an attempt at crossing cultural uh, communication the sixth one is that the computational model since the earliest days of the digital computer however attempts have been made for translators by our uh, with the assist of the computing machine there are really two computer uh, Channel models of translation. The very first one is the machine translation, and the second one is that the computer assisted translation. The seventh and the last one is that the psycho linguistic model that is concerned with the describing the cognitive as aspects of the translation process. So, uh, in in in, uh, in in conclusion, as uh, suggested by the Newbert and the Shrew, uh, uh, concerning the research parameters, this research was based on the process oriented uh, oriented whose system focuses on cognitive system only. Thank you. Uh, please change the slide. Uh, uh, so, um, uh, Nurul, can you please uh, share these slides again? It's very hard for me to see from this. Hello? Yes? Can you please share these slides again? Because I, uh, it's not visible. Oh, okay. Is it visible now? Yeah, somehow. Okay. Uh, so translation uh, process uh, process process uh, occurred research in translation study describes a process uh, uh, taking place in the translator's uh, mind while uh, translating a text uh, and the Stubert in uh, 2009 divides the translation process into uh, into uh, two um, um, uh, into two parts that is the internal process and the external process uh, in addition uh, in in relation uh, uh, to mental processes uh, vinay and the i i can't see it. so uh, they divided the uh, mental process into uh, into either uh, can you please show these slides again Okay, thank you. 
So uh, transition process, process uh, these are the process oriented research in translation history describe the process taking place in the translator's mind while uh, translating a text and it was given by the skew world in 2009. He divides the translation process into uh, two parts that is internal process and the external process. So in addition, uh, in relation to the mental process, we need to also divide the mental process into either a conscious or subconscious process. And uh, the second one is that the cognitive process uh, Vermeut in 1996 uh, says that the cognitive process activities are the those thinking activities that people use to uh, process uh, learning content. And following cognitive uh, science that Hitchens 2000 uh, says that the cognitive process are processes uh, that are involved in memory decision, memory decision making, uh, inference, reasoning, learning, and so on. And the third point is that in addition, uh, Dimitro uh, 2010 states that the cognitive activities of uh, translating are complex, uh, involving the comprehension of, of a, a segment of a text in one one language and the product of a segment of a text into another language and also required uh, requiring processes of uh, a transfer or the stitching between the two languages please next slide so metacognitive process, uh, metacognitive process, uh, following metacognitive uh, sciences uh, given by the Cohen and the Weaver and Lee, 1996, this is that the metacognitive study deals with the pre-planning pre and self-assessment, uh, assess, uh, assessment, online planning, monitoring and evolution as well as post-evaluation of language learning activities. Uh, and other, uh, the, however, both cognitive and the metacognitive process are closely intertwined. Uh, next presenter. Nurul, you can start your presentation. Yes, sir. Okay, so I will continue uh, from here. It's about the analysis and discussion. As mentioned in the previous explanation by Sadaf, the research used intricate problem and decision report, questionnaire translog 2 and Camtasia study 8 to support the translating process in the two texts entitled Apple versus Google is the most Nurul, important. Nurul, Nurul, hang on. Yes. So I have some problems here. Can you, can you wait just one minute? Oh, okay, sir. Okay, let's stand one minute. Okay, can you restart the presentation? I will continue from here. It's about data analysis and discussion. Uh, as mentioned in the previous explanation by Sadaf, the research used integrated problem and decision reports, questionnaire, translog 2, and Canvas yes, Studio 8 to support the translating process in the two texts entitled Apple versus Google is the most important battle in text as a text one and the wholesome hidden message of well -known style as a second text. As we as we key, as we can see in the screen, that is the form of translog recording space in figure four. 4.1 and 4.2. Uh, both of the model is very commonly used in the translating process, but this research used model one, which is 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 it uh, chosen because it is common way of how most translators do the translating process, uh, since they just have to move their head uh, ups and down to translate the source uh, text into the target text. Next is. Uh, uh, the other application is Camtasia Studio 8 software program, as we can see on the screen on figure 4.4 here. The use of this software was in getting data related to the student translator online activities, such as the website they visited and what information they get from the website. Considering the cost of ethic of the research, the three of participants put student G, H, and R. Uh, so uh, this, those um, students, uh, they don't have like um, experience in translating before. So here we we'll look at the one by one data analysis and discussion according to the first research question. The first is about the type of translation process. In this type of translation process, in the process of describing and analyzing, the researchers uh, adopted the theory of learning strategy called cognitive process, cognitive process, and social effective process. 
and the data connected to the files taken by each student translator while translating text one and text two aids in the investigation of kind of translation process they they do. So we will uh, see from each translation process from student H, R, G, H, and R. So this is uh, starting from the student G. The results show that student G used social affective process by looking at the process of translation, uh, where that uh, she did in interaction activity like uh, not interact with a uh, human or uh, interact with uh, her friend, but uh, she did the interaction by opening a website to help her in doing the translation. Like in the figure 4.5 here, she didn't spend time in the pre-drafting process, like there is no spend time here, but the log recorded that she makes a pause after she finished translating the first sentence of the first paragraph in minute 12 here. And then uh, during this pause period, the researchers rewatched the screen recording to see what she done there, and it shows that she spent her time for reading the text, which was actually the activity during pre-drafting press. Uh, besides that, she did a pause again to read reread and did self-correction on her first draft of uh, translating the title apple versus google in minute seven um and during this pause she was recorded to be looking for online resources to improve her uh, first draft of the title and for the linearity of her translation process is another indicator of her uh, um, social effective process uh, she used the multi direction approach to translate where student G didn't follow the sequence of the paragraph contents as she start, uh, started by translating the title uh, and now paragraph one then she skip over the remaining paragraphs in paragraph one and move on to the following paragraph and then this is uh, from the student H as we can see on the table 4.1 student H um, used cognitive learning strategy as she followed the uh prescribe a pace of the translation process uh, and as we can see in a figure 4.6 she spent about 10 um 10 minutes in pre-drafting during which uh she read the whole uh, source uh, text and took notes on certain crucial new language that may be unfamiliar uh, for for her after that she in entered the writing process after finishing pre-drafting where she composed the first draft of her translation then she began self-correction uh, on her post drafting text after completing the first and second passes uh, beside that from the linearity of the process she used linear method of translation process where she started the translating the first sentence before the second one the first uh, paragraph before the second and so forth the same way she did when doing a self correction where she didn't do self correction after completing the translation as a full text but uh, rather she did it uh, sentence by sentence and phrase by phrase and the next is uh, uh, from the student R. As we can see here, student R also use a cognitive process where she spent time to read the source uh, text first, and after that she will start the translation on the transcript. As we can see on the figure four point seven here, the translation um, in a text one she spent about uh, five minutes in pre-drafting text. Uh, where she didn't conduct any keyboard tasks in at this period, uh, like she only showed the source tag and taking notes on several important ideas from the text. Uh, this is supported by the research observation that she read the uh, source text before beginning to work on the translog, and then she follow the translation process in is in a systematic in a systematic way. So in a uh, in the term of uh, use linearity, this the the student uh, use a multidirectional or nonlinear strategy, which means she didn't retranslate in linear way as the student did in her translation process using multidirectional as well. As we can see here for figure 4.8, students are doing the drafting process in multidirectional way where she skip over the first sentence. As we can see here, she just uh, translate the first uh, sentence in, in the first paragraph until in here, and then she right away jump to the next, um, next paragraph to translate the sentence. 
Okay, from the result of the translation process that we see before, it can be concluded that the most translation process used by the tra student translator was cognitive process, but Asadi and Segui not comment on the nature of type of translation process, that they say that if the this cognitive style are innate, training that advocate one way of working through the translation task is not targeting professional behavior, but more likely reflect a reaction to student uh, fixation with correspondence between words. Uh, and this comment suggests that different people will perform different type of translation process, uh, like not limited only to the native process. So here's the next uh, discussion is about type of self-correction. The log note uh, that the student translator self-corrected their translation in eight ways, uh, such as word deletion, word substitution, spelling correction, returning correction, word addition, meaning correction, meaning correction. Capati, cap, capitalization correction and grammatical correction. And uh, this type of self-correction are used by all of the student translator, but in different frequency of using it. As we can see from this table, which is from student G, the type of self-correction she used uh, most frequently was word substitution followed by word deletion in both text one and text two. Here's the example in the left uh, screen. Uh, here's the example from word substitution from text two data three, where a uh, student G substitute her first draft of Kamu here with Anda, uh, which both many you in the source language or source uh, text. This substitution obviously affect the use of translation of the same word in the rest of the text, like the consistency is needed needed to this preference uh, that she had to be consistent in using the word anda whenever translating the word you here in all sentence in the text. Uh, the example that I provide here is just like a small number of many examples written in the researcher data analysis, uh, considering we have limited time to discuss all of the uh, example. Uh, here's a uh, from a student H in her um, self-correction process. Um, student H use word substitution show uh, the highest frequency in text one and spelling is the highest frequency um, in text two and also followed by word substitution as the highest frequency. Here's the example uh, from student H in text two data eight about spelling correction. In here, the word U was translated into ANSA and then even translate it to backup in the first draft, which is uh, both of uh, those uh, um, word is unknown in the target language, which is in Indonesian language. We don't have uh, this meaning. So in the final draft, the the student uh, changed the an ansa become became anda and backup be became bahkan. OK, so. Uh, then the last is from student R, which word substitution followed by word deletion, meaning and spelling was the most frequently used in both text one and the text two. Since we have seen the example of word substitution and word um, spelling correction, now we will look at the example of self-correction in meaning from text one data 10. Um, student R self-corrected the meaning of the parcel for rip off here in the book one it was translated into mengalahkan or means defeat in English in her first draft here. Um, the word mengalahkan or defeat was related to the competition, but uh, the context in he in this uh, sentence, which the word was used, didn't contain competition meaning. Finally, she decided to change the meaning with the word merusak or mean uh, runes in English. Besides, she also decided to correct the meaning of feature, which was equivalent with the word feature in the source uh, text here. In this self-correction, she tried to explain the meaning of feature by providing its more specific meaning, such as keistimewaan or meaning distinction in final draft in English. Okay, so in response to the second study question, it was discovered that a uh, word substitution is the short of self-correction most commonly performed by student translation. Uh, but this conclusion contradict Mike, uh, Michael's uh, in 90 and 28 findings, which demonstrate that a uh, word deletion is the most common sort of self-correction performed by student translator.
next uh, discussion is about the use of online resources in the translation process. To see the online resources in the translation process, Camtasia program is being used in this research to see both online and offline activity done by the participant. But in this research, the researcher just focus on the identifying online research only that used by the student translator. The information about the online research resources that they used in the translation process was gained from questionnaire as well, and both of data revealed the online resource used by the participant in pre-drafting, drafting, and post-drafting process. Here, as we can see in on uh, the tab table five. Point one here in pre drafting phase, they uh, student visits a uh, news and blogs uh, to find information related to the content of the text uh, they were going to translate and the information serve as their background knowledge of the text that help them create link with their translation text. And in the drafting phase here, um, they face only one type uh, of online resource like Google Translate, um, where some of them copy the complete text into the source text space of Google Translate. And then by copying the whole text into Google Translate, uh, students treated themselves as the editors who did editing for the translation draft provided by Google Translate. And as we can see here, in post-drafting phase, uh, the student translator used much more online resources rather than the ones who used in the pre-drafting and drafting phase. In this phase, uh, they self-corrected uh, the first draft they had written during the drafting phase. Um, in doing self-correction, the student translator used online resources to solve their various problems related to the self-correction, the terminology, uh, vocabulary, and structure, and social acceptability. Basically, the terminology dealing with the field of sign that exam, examines the meaning or definition of term and its use, which was employed differently in different contexts, uh, several different contexts. And then, uh, for the example here, one of the term in the source text, which sounds strange to them, was lock horn, which was composed of two words lock and horn. In the first draft of the translation, Student just word lock for the translation of the term. This means that they only translate the word lock but skip the word horn. Uh, as we know that this was not a good decision since lock and lock horn had to be different in meaning. Uh, one of the participants, like student G, self corrected the translation of this term through the help of online resources by visiting the website um, like this figure 4.10, dictionary Cambridge ORG. Uh, she used this dictionary to find the description or the purpose of the term of prof provided in English. Uh, so she finally found that Lockhorn means to begin to argue or fight. And so she worked uh, bersitegang or arguing in English for the translation of this term in target language, which is in Indonesian language. And the next uh, problem is related to the self-correction uh, vocabulary. Consideration of vocabulary correction appear because as many English words have more than one meaning and sometimes their meanings are not close to each other. For example, um, word season here may mean one of the four periods of the year, spring, summer, autumn, or winter, but it also can mean series or flavor and etc. Therefore, translating this word must depend on the context in which it takes place. And the next is uh, related to the structure. This problem is became consideration of translation because language may have different has different structure from one and another. Um, the website we said it contain Indonesian article that provide the example of target language grammatical correct sentence that used by the student G, for example. Uh, she visit the website uh, id to get to know the standard structure of Bahasa Indonesia. So the next is about uh, related to the social acceptability problem. Uh, the main purpose of seeking for social acceptability is to make their translation as natural as possible in order that their translator doesn't sound strange and even the reader don't know that they read the translate uh, text one. Uh, related to the use of online resource in the translation process, they visit various websites to check and recheck whether their translator, their translator, uh, I mean that their translation are socially acceptable in the target uh, text. For example, here student R 
visited forum.detik.com to ensure the use of tarian kuda Gangnam Style or horse dance in Gangnam Style in text uh, two in Indonesian text by visiting this website. Uh, she know that uh, horse den was used in the news provided by this website and of course has been read by million of Indonesian people so once uh, the word in the translate text have been known to many people in the target uh, text uh, those words have been socially acceptable in Indonesian uh, context this is the last um, discussion is related to the translation process contributed the quality of translation product. The rate assessed the quality of the translator trans based on the scoring rubric that has been formulated by this by the researchers, especially uh, this is mentioned in the chapter three, but we didn't reach it uh, yet. Um, like we can see that the score is a uh, range score here. Scored 80 until 100 category excellent criterion. Score 70 until 79 is very good criterion, and, and so on. Um, from those uh, score and criterion, we will see the contribution to the quality of translation product in translating process from the translate uh, from the translation process of text two, for example. And then uh, looking at the score they got here in the translation process here if we compare to the other scores student g got the highest score and in a good uh, rate rather than the other student translator both in text one and the text two whereas uh, we can see uh, where student g claim to have received uh, the highest score 70 a stick and 62 from the rate and was classified very good and good rate in in the translation process, as we know that uh, uh, previously, student G used the social effective strategy that uh, I described in the, the type of translation process before, in which uh, she did not follow the um, predetermined phases of the translation process and instead used a multilinear method in which uh, she translated the text in a different pattern. In the, in the term of quality, using a social effective method during the translation process result in better translate material. Um, Besides that, self-correction also contribute to improve translation quality, as we can see here. Um, based on the frequency of self-correction done by all of student translator, it can be seen that student G did more self-correction, uh, which is uh, she did like uh, 150, 44 and, um, times in self-correction. This also indicates that she spent more time for self-correction by visiting more variety of online resources than the other two student translators, since a uh, student G used social effective learning strategy in the translation process. Therefore, from uh, the data from the translog screen recording questionnaire and rates score, it can be concluded that the use of social effective strategy that longer time spent for self-correction and the time management on of online resource contribute very much to the quality of the translate text. So here's the conclusion. Uh, the use of software in translation process or TPR is required since it is uh, like extremely difficult for researchers to oversee all of the action that occurred throughout the translation process where uh, the discovery about self-correction discusses and stress the critical significance of uh, self-correction in the translation process. Is it true that uh, there can be nev never be a great translated work that has not been self-correction? And using all resources is very beneficial for the translator. Uh, but if they can manage uh, internet resources better, uh, they can operate faster and write with higher quality translate contents. And then uh, the three things influence translation quality consists of three things: the first, the kind of translation procedure, the use of self correction, and then the use of web resources in the translation process. Okay, uh, that's all from me. Uh, from us, me and and Sadaf, I'm I'm very sorry if I skip very much um important point from the original text. Um, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Right. Thank you very much, Nurul. And.
and yeah, I will give my comments as usual for the presentations, uh, presentations first and second presentations. Uh, so I will first highlight some problems in the presentation file. Uh, this is actually some typical problems that we have seen previously uh, in the uh, in the, the earlier presentations earlier weeks. So full sentences are written instead of keywords and uh, key phrases. So I have repeated this over and over, but still I find this error in every presentation. OK, and maybe you think that is less relevant uh, and I will show you why it is relevant and we have seen the proof today. OK, that's because when you put uh, too much fonts. Yeah, so logically when you write in full sentences in full sentences, then you're going to use more fonts. OK, if you use more fonts, you're going to occupy more space. OK, if you occupy more space, what do you do? OK, you have to make the fonts smaller to occupy that one slide. That's logical, right? So less fonts. So if you had less fonts, then you will have you would have the chance to make them bigger then more visible. So what happened in the first presentation uh, that the first presenter could not read the fonts is because they're very small. Like I can read it here uh, because I'm using a laptop, even though my laptop is quite small. But how if I just rely on my uh, mobile phone? OK, it depends on how good my eyes are. My eyes are not really good, so I prefer to use larger uh, device. So that's why I prefer to see this on my laptop instead of my uh, mobile phone. So it is actually a problem that you need to anticipate and you need to rehearse. OK, I have mentioned to you about the strategy that you need to rehearse. And it seems that it has not been done. I'm not really sure. Yeah, because the first presentation uh, is not finished even after 30 minutes, so I just need to cut it. Uh, second presentation, good. It's less than 30 minutes, but uh, uh, Noodle, you sound like really, really in rush. So actually, you can do the presentation. You could have done the presentation a bit slower and not in great rush like what you have just did. Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, OK. Um, perhaps you will give me some excuses. OK, like, oh, sorry, I have only one device. I have only my mobile phone. OK, so it's not an excuse. Uh, it's some things that you need to anticipate. So this is why you are a master student as adult learner. You need to anticipate things. Uh, you can prepare your own file. Yeah, even if it is the same file to avoid fonts unreadable. So if you cannot read the font, you can just uh, read it on your own device. You can make the font bigger in your device. How if you only have one device? Yeah, and you will say, oh, my device is small. Fonts are invisible. Yeah, well, that's not Nexus 2. You can always print the presentation slides. So so you can just ask Noodle, well, are we on slide number three or two? And then you can rely on your uh, 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 printed slides. Second presentation, OK, still I still see some uh, the same the same uh, the same errors like full sentences are written instead of keywords or query phrases. However, it is slightly better because just because in the second presentation, the noodle put a lot of tables and visualizations like pictures. OK, so yeah, noodle is lucky because in the, the, the I think it's a chapter four. Yeah, chapter four. Uh, there are lots and lots of pictures, and tables that you can really use in the presentation, so you don't have to fully rely on the uh, text. But that's not what we see in the uh, uh, first presentation. I think chapter one, two, and three. There are not so many tables. Uh, oh, there are some images, but the image, I think the image like three uh, percent uh, from Holmes presented in the first presentation is uh, less relevant. But anyway, uh, I'm just talking about uh, the way the presentation uh, file is prepared. So it has nothing to do with the, the content. OK, so that's my comments on the 
uh, uh, the way you did the presentation, but not the content, but the presentation file to be more precise. OK, uh, now uh, about the content. OK, yeah, it's also the same like previous two presentations. What I meant is not is uh, the presentation last week, meeting 15, uh, not 15, 15. Oh yeah, 15, right. 15, 13 and the earlier presentations because I still see some unnecessary uh, repetitions and this cycle always repeats even though I have uh, given my advices uh, to you. So this is very, very common and I have mentioned about this a couple of times. I think in every uh, in every meeting that chapter two, yeah, or not necessarily chapter two, it can be like chapter two and three, but literature review chapters. Yeah, I said chapters because in some thesis, uh, reviews can be written in two different chapters. They will always be repeated in the not always, but most likely they will be repeated in the discussion or findings or the analysis chapters. OK, so it is quite useless if you just present chapter two as is. Because they are conceptual details and the difference between uh, presenting a thesis and presenting uh, chapters or books is that when you present it, some chapters from books, uh, they are all theoretical foundations. So yeah, skipping skipping some some sections uh, is not very recommended. Yeah, I think yeah because uh, all all sections I think are relevant. Yeah, but what you are presenting now, and I mean like the presentation, uh, a thesis, the thesis presented in the earlier meetings. Yeah. They are not books, they are application. OK, so you apply. What's available? Yeah, what are available in the books? And then you use that for an application for your research, not for your research. I mean, like for the person who did the research. OK, and you present uh, their findings, their thesis. Yeah, so if I let the first presentation continue, we will see some more and more presented, which will be repeated in the uh, second presentation. And actually, this is a very, very common uh, thing to do in a thesis, a dissertation, or undergrad projects, that you write a lot of things in literature reviews, uh, then you repeat them in the uh, findings and discussion section. So this is one thing that you should have anticipated. And uh, yeah, in the second presentation, actually no need to discuss each individual. Yeah, but discuss the findings. OK, so Noodle still presented uh, results for individual uh, subjects. Yeah, so there are three subjects in this in this thesis that Noodle presented, Noodle and Sada presented. So you, do, you actually didn't have to present them one by one, yeah, but explain what happened uh, across these subjects. Yeah, and also it is quite important to present answers to the research question and sign posts in the presentation. So the way Noodle present the, the presentation is like, OK, uh, I'm going to start. I think it will start in chapter four. But even if you start in chapter four, and if you see the thesis, it's sign post that I'm going to answer some research questions that I have presented in earlier chapter in chapter one. OK, so you remind your audience yeah, that the in this presentation, you will answer the research questions uh, that Sadaf has already uh, presented to us. Yeah, so there are some research questions. Uh, yeah, so why, why is it important? So audience know what what they expect, OK? And uh, because. Uh, if the first presentation in the first presentation too much time was spent on literature review, 
audience might forget what research questions are, and that's why you need to signpost this in the uh, presentation. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, both presentations, first and second presentation, sounds like you are reading the thesis. Yeah, I have mentioned this earlier. Uh, second presentation is slightly better because it has some uh, images and tables. Yeah, but if you keep doing this, I don't know if you do really understand the thesis, uh, what the thesis is about. Uh, this might relate on how you present. So, for example, because you write in full sentences, even though you do understand the uh, the content of the presentation. But. Uh, it it poses some difficulties. Yeah, it poses some difficulties for you to present, even though you do understand because you really are there. Yeah, to the uh, to the the, 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 the the slides. OK, the, the full sentences that you wrote on the slides. OK. Just in case you uh, you don't know what the thesis is about, yeah, particularly uh, people who who don't present, yeah. Uh, as compared to the other two theses presented in the earlier meetings, I think this thesis is quote unquote easiest. Yeah, very very easy because it's very straightforward and just by reading the abstract i think it's very easy to understand its contents and how to present best um, i will share my screen and show you the uh, the abstract okay. um. OK, it seems like I downloaded it instead of uh, opening it in my browser. Anyway, I'll share my screen. Yeah, so this thesis is written by an Indonesian uh, in the University of Sumatra Utara, one of the the state universities in uh, not important that's just to let you know oh no i'm on it okay okay here's the answer so it's it's really really straightforward because this abstract yeah present to you in the very first sentence with the research questions okay this research is aimed at one two three, four. OK, so. This is I think this is a very good abstract. Because not everyone has time to read a full thesis. Yeah, and by making the abstract straightforward like this, yeah, you can make uh, uh, your thesis more visible. Yeah, so you can attract more and more people to read your thesis. One, determining the process more dominantly used by the student translator in the translation process. OK, so this is like a frequency question. Which one is? Which one is used the most in this case? A translation process. OK, we will define translation process later, but this is the first question. OK, finding out the type of self corrections mostly done by student translators while translating the text. Again, it's related to frequency. OK, uh, so what kind of type, what what kind of self correction uh, uh, categories yeah, carried out by student translators? OK, number three, finding out the online resources. OK, this is not a frequency question, but uh, but just listing. And I think this is uh, uh, if I am the author of this thesis, I will make these two. Uh, my primary aims and three and four uh, as subsidiary aims. Well, three is subsidiary aim and four perhaps as an impact. Yeah, because this is still a possibility. 
finding the online resources used by the student translators while translating the text, where well, this is just listing and uh, finding out how the translation process contributes to the quality of translation uh, product. OK, this is another analysis. So this is the mandatory aspect that you have to present yeah, from chapter one. Now, moving on to this. To achieve this blah, 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 up to here. Hang on, hang on. This. Yeah. This is uh, about the methodology or procedure. OK, it is written in chapter one. It is also written in chapter three. So it is useless to present them twice. OK, so if you're responsible for chapter one and chapter three, Chapter three, right? Chapter three is methodology. Okay, then you just need to present this once. Okay, and we don't see lots of details about second chapters here. So what you need to, if you want to follow the structure of the thesis, yeah, if you want to follow the structure of the thesis, so what you need to do is a describing translation process. Yeah, and uh, type of self correction categories of uh, self corrections. And you can do this in chapter four because by that time you're going to refer to the real examples obtained from the application study. So if you just read the examples presented in the chapter th chapter th two literature review, then you're going to see examples uh, that's from the theory, from the from books, from papers. But they are not about the, the study, okay? And they can be there can be different. So the point is that do not repeat the same thing. Okay, where was I? Oh yeah, this one. Okay, the findings of blah blah blah. So this is the result. Quest research question number one. So this is also the answers. The answer to research question number one is this. The answer to research question number two is this. And uh, the answer of research question number three is uh, this. Number four is this. OK, yeah, and he put some more details about uh, self corrections. But yeah, I think those four research questions uh, have been answered. OK, and this is the conclusion. So we can see from this abstract. So this is a very good way to present the thesis. OK, you don't talk too much about literature review chapters. Just integrate them in chapter four uh, for, uh, when you're presenting chapter four. Just explain the concept uh, and describe the result of the study and discuss with maybe one or two examples. It's not all. OK. Yeah, so. The point of the presentation is actually uh, simple. OK, four research questions. Yeah, here research questions. Dominant translation process, dominant type of self correction, dominant online references, how translation process lead to quality uh, translation. Yeah, and then you can also discuss maybe like 10% of this if you want, but if you don't, you can still cover this in chapter four uh, when you're presenting chapter four. Uh, this one, yeah, you can do it separately. OK, so if you have repeat presented that here, and I think you did in the first presentation, no need to repeat in chapter uh, three, so no need to present chapter three anymore. So what you need to focus is actually this. Yeah. So I have noticed that the person also has findings and discussion. Yeah, but this is somehow a repetition, I think, from chapter four. So yeah, this is the core that you need to present. OK. So if I can summarize quickly about the procedure, yeah, so this is a research which involves a very limited number of participants, so only three. OK, so only three students. So the first time I read this, oh, why only three students? Why, why, why this can even be a thesis? Yeah, but when I read full through the procedure and I see the difficulty on uh, how the person acquiring the data, then oh yeah, so yeah, 
three people maybe is a good number. Yeah, because the person needs to record uh, what the, the translators were doing when they are presenting and they analyze what, what happened when they are doing the, uh, the, the translation. So it's not only um, uh, assessing the final product. So this is what happened in the previous two um, theses. So they focus on the products. So they don't, they didn't discuss what happened before and why the person, the translator came to the decision. But here, I think the strength is of this thesis is that the author also analyzed what happened before and what happened during the translation, uh, uh, translation process. Okay, so as you can see here, are some tools are used. Uh, not this. Yeah, so if you go to the data collection method, I think Nuru has already mentioned and also sort of like the use of Camtasia and Translog in which you can record uh, how much time you spent for the translation, uh, whether you make corrections, and that's that's very important as one of the aim of this thesis. The primary aim of this thesis is, is to, uh, to identify, not to identify, but to 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 understand which self correction strategy is the most frequent and by that means that you need to be able to see you need to be able to identify what self correction strategies applied by the students and translog uh, is very is a very useful tool to do that okay yeah because it records all activities on screen so if you consult on online resources like using dictionaries uh, yeah, the, the the person who wrote the thesis or the thesis author can see that. Yeah, an evaluation, and also there is an evaluation by human translators or lecturers. Okay, so what's that's about the methodology or the uh, procedure. Now, so presenting chapter four. Chapter four is actually somehow the combination of uh, chapter two. Chapter four itself and chapter five. Okay, so it is repeated just slide a bit here. So what you need to do is to explain to answer the first research question is just by explaining table four uh, one. So if you see table four one, table sorry table four point one. So you see this matrix. Students, okay, this is easy. Student number one, student number two, student number three. Yeah, so this is what you need to explore. What does orderly mean? What does not orderly mean? Okay, so this refers to the translation phase. Okay, so the author uh, assumes that there is some standard when you're doing a translation is that you read a target language text and then you translate. Okay, but that's not always the case. It's it's very common in translation that you read a bit of this source language, then you translate. You read a bit of the source language text and then you translate. Yeah, so it's not always orderly. So that's why there are two findings here. So in H orderly and so in, uh, uh, HR orderly. First, uh, sorry, student G not orderly. So when Nurul was presenting, uh, uh, she mentioned this, I think, in the presentation, that uh, you can randomize the process. Yeah, you can always go back. And the linearity here, yeah, what is linearity? Yeah, this is the self-correction, yeah. So you move from up to down, that's the linear one, okay? But in many cases, it is multi-directional. So sometimes you revise, you self-correct. It's always self-correct, by the way. Uh, it's not like when you are in a conversation, someone uh, they need to correct, can have the opportunity to correct you. But for translation, everything is self-correct, of course. Yeah. So multi-directional means that you don't go close by close. OK, let me revise this close first. OK, now it's done. Let me do the second one. Oh, it's done. The third one on is done. So that's called linear. But if you can see here, the dominant self-correction is multi-directional. Okay, so 
sometimes you revise this and then you forget, oh, OK, I need to go back here. I need to revise this and you go back even for you go even further back. And you move much forward. OK, so that's called multi directional. So in line, this is uh, actually less relevant, but I think, uh, yeah, it's because he mentioned it. So in line means like that you are not. You can go back. You can move back and forth on the same line here. Yeah. So you revise uh, here, 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 but then you go back here. OK, so that about the self correction and this is visible by the translog. OK. Now type of translation process. Yeah, what is social effective? So social effective. Uh, so we have social effective, cognitive and metacognitive. So if you read the description of cognitive and metacognitive, they are quite similar, I think. And also the, the author himself, he has mentioned that cognitive and metacognitive processes uh, do have some sections that overlap. So that's why yeah, we can uh, we can only find cognitive here, but that can also include uh, metacognitive. So I think it's quite uh, reasonable for us to distinguish just two types of translation process, social effective and cognitive. So if you did cognitively, let me start with this. You do it the standard way, okay? So like pre-drafting, drafting and uh, post-drafting. So it is like when you write a story chronologically. Okay, so you read the source text, you understand the source text, you translate every sentence one by one from up to down, and then you do post editing. That's it. So everything seems to be by order. Okay, but social effective uh, is slightly different. So it means that there are interactions with others. Okay, while in cognitive process, you just rely on yourself. Okay, but social effective means like you have interaction with others. Other skills here does not mean people. Yeah, but it can be uh, when you're consulting dictionaries, uh, corpora, parallel texts, etc. Okay, so I think the example in this thesis might not be uh, very easy to understand, but one. Oh yeah, there is one activity which is quite easy to understand. Uh, consultingpros.com. So I have shown you this, uh, if I remember it correctly, or my students in basic translation class. So you can ask question like, what is the translation for this word in Indonesian or in English? You can ask these questions. So that's what I call social effective. And we need to understand that the person only uh, listed the most dominant process. So it does not mean that a person here, person G is totally social effective, student H uh, cognitive, student R cognitive, no. So that's just a tendency. It is very common for us to uh, mix methods, uh, to mix approaches when we are translating. Okay, but again, uh, this relates to the research question, so yeah, he needs to do this. And also, so that's the first research question. Now let's go to the second research question, which you can find the answer in this table, table 4.3. Let me just put it here. <clears throat> okay, as it has been predicted, uh, as I always assume before I finish reading this, it's always multi-directional. Yeah, so it's not always linear. You don't go clause by clause all the time. You need to sometimes go back. You correct this and then you feel that, oh, that's wrong. Even though you are here, you can go back to this line. OK, so it's multi-directional. Yeah. And one important addition to this table, so if you can see this, WS, 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 S. So what does that mean? Yeah, so it's not mentioned here. Yeah, but if you scroll back down, you will find it in the appendix. Where is it? Oh, where is it? Yeah, this one. 
So word deletion, WD, word substitution, WS, spelling S, return R, word deletion, WA, etc. Okay, so yeah. Well, if I have to criticize this, this is, I will put this much earlier, like the WD stands for word deletion, WS stands for word substitution. Because I was guessing, because when I read this thesis from up to down, I don't do it linearly like translation. I cannot find what does WS mean. Yeah, but when I read the subsequent uh, um, paragraphs, subsequent sections, I do understand the reference. Oh, and I find it the complete reference here. Yeah, and answers to research question number three is not really difficult because you just list uh, like press.com, fifa.co.id. Uh, where is it? Let me highlight it for you. Well, I think Noodle has already did, but let me see if I can find it quickly. <coughs> this one. Is it, where is it? Ah, not here. Yeah, this is the 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 acronyms or the abbreviation. But that's what I'm not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the website. <sighs> Come on. Post.com. There's a table that Noodle highlighted here. Yeah, but there is one interesting uh, a point highlighted by the author that not all um, links are relevant to the translation. So, for example, I think you mentioned at some point it's about YouTube. Yeah, the screen recording reveals that she visited several websites which were not helpful in doing self-correction. She visited YouTube and searched for the songs by the Gangnam Style group. Uh, then she played the music, listened and enjoyed it. Okay, this makes her able to perform her best effort in doing self-correction. That's it. Okay, yeah. So sometimes, uh, so this can be an info to if you're doing something that's focused on what you're doing. Well, some people can work while listening to the music, but some people just can't. Like me, I cannot listen to music while I'm working. So yeah, but again, this is not very, very important. But just one point that the, the author uh, uh, highlighted. Yeah, but imagine if more and more uh, less relevant uh, websites were opened, then the, the performance of the translation, I think, would drop. Yeah, so that's our research question uh, number three. And there are two more things about research question number three, which is about acceptability. 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 Yeah, so here we can see here self correction proposals, including self correcting terminology, vocabulary, structure, and social acceptability. Well, I would categorize these into just two from this one to this one terminology, vocabulary. So this is linguistic acceptability and social acceptability, or you can say like social linguistic or pragmatic acceptability. Yeah, so one instance, uh, so we know already about this because we have discussed this so many times uh, in our earlier meetings. Social acceptability is like finding out, yeah, whether one terminology is actually used, is authentic and used. So you think that perhaps this word is correct linguistically, but has it always has it been used before? Yeah. Because it is possible that you have some potential words yeah, as a can as some candidates when you want to translate some words. So for instance, you want to translate element to, I don't know, Arabic, uh, French. But there are more than one candidates 
and you research which one is used. So perhaps some are not used, some are used. And for the, the words that uh, are authentically used, you might want to have a look at the domain because if you're translating uh, uh, in the wrong domain and choose wrong terminology, that could be a problematic. So let me give you an example. The concrete yeah, is the opposite of abstract. OK, so in Indonesian, if you want to translate concrete, you just translate it into concrete. So it's a loan word. Just do some a very little modification. Uh, on the spelling concrete to concrete, OK, but when you're translating concrete. In engineering domain, it means something different. OK, it's liquid that can get uh, that can get hard, like when you're building a, a, uh, a house, uh, once you put a brick, then you put the cement. So the cement here is, is the concrete. OK, an example. Of uh, concrete, OK, so that's one example of social acceptability. Yeah, research question number four, uh, evaluation by a lecturer or translator. I think it's over here. Yeah, so this is the evaluation and uh, yeah, there uh, this is how the evaluation looks like. So we have accuracy, finding equivalent, translation skill, grammar, safe omission, blah, blah, blah. If I have to criticize this, uh, this is like mixing evaluations and error identifications. OK, so yeah. So why why is it here like safe? Is it always wrong? No. If you have more omissions, is it wrong? No, it can be correct. One of the valid translation strategies is a mission. OK, so yeah, but I don't want to criticize this. This is now just present. Uh, so an important finding from the evaluation is that uh, it is something well known actually, is that if you are familiar to the topic of the text of the source text, it will be helpful. Another finding is a suggestion is not finding it's a suggestion by the author of the thesis is that you don't spend too much time reading the source language text. Yeah. Uh, so this comes from the finding in which he found like multi uh, uh, directional methods are used most frequently by the translators. So don't spend too much time reading the source language. Uh, do the translation. If you don't understand, just reread the source language text. And then another finding is that it is important to choose what process. Uh, 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 that suits every individual. So yeah, some one of I think one of the translator works linearly, like doing self correction linearly, like starting uh, uh, from uh, up to button button. Yeah, from up to down. So yeah, but not everyone likes that that style. That process, some people like to go way down below. Maybe he or she will correct the title, the translation of the title later on once uh, once all the text have been translated 100 percent. Yeah, so the point is that it is important to know. Uh, uh, what kind of person are you like? Uh, which style that you are comfortable with? And if you already know that, then you can optimize your performance while doing the translation. Yeah, and then one thing that I, one thing highlighted by the evaluator is the importance of post editing. OK, so you you have finished drafting and before you submit like you uh, edit and this is one step uh, missed in machine translation. So in machine translation, you don't get that. OK, so you just give the text. Uh, and then the Google Translate or any form of machine translation will do that for you uh, right away. So uh, post editing, if you use Google Translate, is very, very important. Okay. Yeah, so that's all. And uh, the conclusion is very much repetition of uh, uh, chapter four. And yeah, I think Noodle has presented that already. 
Right, so uh, that's it. So I hope uh, now you get a little bit of glimpse about what the thesis is about. Yeah. Any question about the thesis? So even though you haven't read it, of course, uh, for those who have not presented. No, but thank you so much. Oh yeah, and yeah, Sadaf has question about attendance list. Don't worry, I will take care of the attendance list uh, right now. So yeah, so I will do this right now while waiting for uh, questions. If you have any, so I will just yeah, everyone is in, so just mark everyone in the present. Okay, so yeah, thank you for reminding me. But sometimes I forget to mark this if I haven't shared the barcode already. Yeah, so everyone is present. So if you want, you can check on your system because I think last week, last week someone complained to me that he was not marked present, but I think I did. And we talk about this uh, with exchange email so many times to the IT and the administration, and I don't know. And she said that she will contact the IT directly. So yeah, it's okay. question ask. OK, so yeah. Uh, if you have not seen my announcements already, uh, so I have announced that the link to submit the, um, the, 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 the files for the final term exam is available now. Yeah. So this is something that I uh, don't have to teach, uh, but I will just uh, advise you anyway. So the 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 submission time will end uh, depending on the schedule. So here, I don't know if it is visible to you. I will, I'm going to make this bigger. Okay, so I hope this is visible. So yeah, here we are. June 16, 2022. Uh, so, but of course you can submit earlier. So this is for you to mark your attendance. You can mark yourself in, yeah, in between this time. If you don't see the barcode, yeah, just let me know because this is not not like a lecture. I'm not going to uh, uh, be with you. So just let me know if you don't see the barcode, and I will contact the administration. So I will close the submission by this time. So after. 1440 yeah no more uh submission is accepted yeah well maybe you have excuses uh we don't have electricity i have problems with my device that's why you need to anticipate things yeah so please do not submit you just very very close to this submit one day earlier yeah if you can if you have finished okay so don't submit very near to the uh, closing of the submission time. <laughs> yeah, same as for the uh, our next class, Pengembangan Bahan Ajar, Material Development. Uh, yeah, on the same day as well. Yeah, same day as well. And of course, you can also contact uh, Ibu Deli or Pak Mualimin in case you I have a problem with the barcode and I'm not available. Yeah, feel free to contact them as well. And if you see mm -mm -mm, here, is it? Oh, this one is for language de matter development. Yeah, this one is for the translation. So if you go to about this class. Yeah, so you can find the link here, link to submit yeah, or yeah, you can go down to meeting 16, final term exam, and click here. Okay, maybe try that now. See if uh, it looks the same on your screen, just in case. But I think I have assigned this, so you should be seeing the same thing here. Any question? No question asked. OK, so uh, I thank you for attending this course. 
yeah, I do hope that you get valuable insights. Yeah, even though very little or too many, I don't know. Yeah, but I do hope that you get some valuable insights from this class. Yeah, either from me and Budeli or not Budeli, Pak Mualimin, yeah, because I'm co-teaching this class with uh, Pak Mualimin. And yeah, looking forward to the final term exam files and grading you. Yeah, I hope and I know you will do your best, okay, for this class. Thank you very much. You can leave this uh, meeting. Yeah, as you have no question, then I'll see you in the next 20 minutes for the uh, material development class. OK, everyone has been marked in, so no problem with the attendance list. Uh, I'll see you in 20 minutes. OK, goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Bye.